Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome in to a great show today uh, to the Sports Hutter here on the Grateful Gap Podcast. You know, NBA season is back. WNBA season is wrapped up. We got what's going on in wrestling. World Series kicks off tomorrow. We here. We're in the thick of it. You know, we're getting uh, close to some NCAA um, playoff action about a couple weeks away. You know what I mean? So it's, it's wrapping up, man. The year's coming to a close, but all the good sports stuff is starting to kick off, um, get to where it need to be. So. Uh, we got a full rundown for y'all today, but I'm about to get directly to the daily verse and then uh, Mad Matt to kick it off in wrestling and then we'll go from there. So daily verse for the day of October 24th, 2024, derives from the book of Matthew chapter 10, verse 16, and it states as follows. Look, I am sending you out as sheep among wolves. So prove yourselves cautious as serpents and yet innocent as doves. Amen. And again, it's from the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 16. And this morning, ladies and gentlemen, for the Sports Huddle Rundown, again, we got what's happening in wrestling. We got the WNBA Finals wrap-up, WNBA Finals MVP. We got Thursday Night Football Preview. We got NFL Week 7 Recap. Uh, we got NBA Hawks season debut for our number one pick. It kicked off yesterday for the Hawks and the rest of the NBA. Um, we got the NBA season, NBA history uh, recap, NCAA football top 25 week eight recap again um the world series preview and then we got the national hockey league so again man matt will be kicking it off what's going on in wrestling this past weekend or what's coming up so um i'll keep it short and simple this week i know i normally rant but uh halloween havoc is coming up this sat this uh sunday for nxt that's a wwe event that's on peacock your main event is going to be Ethan Page versus Trick Williams in the day, in a Devil's Playground match. So it's kind of like an anything goes type deal. Um, you got Stephanie Fakir and Julia taking on the NXT Women's Champion, Roxanne Perez. And I really hate, I can't remember old girl name. Maybe it's because I haven't seen her in a while. But I'm going to come back around to that. Oh, Cora J. There we go. My bad, Cora J. You've been out with injury. I ain't seen you in a while. You're a pivotal face to this division. Um New Japan World Quest happened this Saturday up in London. Zack Sabre Jr. brought the belt home. He defeated Sonata in a title match, so that was his first title match. He said that his goal is to do what hasn't been done by any foreign wrestler, that is defend the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship at New Japan's biggest event which and actually win. So that hasn't been done yet, and he plans on being the first. I have all faith in him. He deserves a long title run. Kosei Fujita upset Michael Oku. That's another thing I can take from that. But my return to PCW is probably my highest point of the weekend. It's been a minute since I've been to Platinum Championship Wrestling. And I showed up for their biggest show. Because oh, I pulled up for the press conference. It was wild. Like, <laughs> like I pulled up for the press conference. And these boys was, I'm like, Jesus Christ, this is this is some personal stuff y'all saying in here. Calling each other MFers and everything. I'm like, oh, man, you guys are on it today. Then they went ahead and started the, started the show early. We sitting down in the arena. Uh, DJ Smoke ERC, they apparently they're in the parking lot brawling. You can hear them in the parking lot brawling. Somebody said they even went over next door to a bar. They're next to a bar out there. Somebody said they even went over to next to the door to the bar and they was brawling on the pool tables and stuff. That's that was like pretty cool. Finally seeing somebody get hit with a light tube as sinister as that sound. You know, seeing it on these YouTube videos and seeing it in person is it's different experiences. So yeah, um ERC defeated DJ Smoke in a street fight. Dominique Stuckey won the Platinum Battle Royale. So with that, you get a title shot whenever you want. Remember that. Um, PCW Dillard's Choice. Everybody from Eastside Ronin dressed up like it was for a funeral. I find that, like, crazy. That's some great character work for their uh, match they had coming up. Everybody dressed up in the press conference like they were dressing up for a funeral. And then everybody had face paints and different looks. I'm sitting here like, dang, I clearly missed a lot. And then Hakeem Young finally came back, and he jumped into the fold. So the end of Eastside Ronin is here. Trey Shaw retained his uh, Dillard's Choice Championship. Duncan Mitchell and Hakeem Young left together. That's an interesting development. And Cedric Sorrell is officially the last Ronin, as he called himself, because he was left in the ring by himself. Can't wait to see what his future holds. Uh, Lamar Diggs and William Huckabee had a banger, what they called King of the Streets fight, and I like it. They came in with, like, street clothes on. And the moment, anytime you hit somebody with a German suplex at the beginning of the match, you know it's personal. But Lamar Diggs beat William Huckabee in the King of the Street fights. 
even pull uh, a <laughs> Brunson Reed moment where he was just jumping off the top rope. These guys too big for this, but he's athletic. So he was jumping off the top rope, hitting this man with like six body slashes, body splashes, had people in the back and, and the referees coming trying to get him to stop. So that was a pretty cool moment. Um, Edward Draven won uh, this flag match they had. So Edward Draven won, and he is also crowned a new title, the Castle Quattro Castle de Lucha. That's like the secondary event they do up there. So he is now their champion for that event. And he's way over. I think he's going to become a world champion one day from just PCW as a whole. Quattro had an interesting match against somebody called Sleepy Wrestler. I sat there and said he probably narcoleptic. Man kept playing like he falling asleep during the match. But he had him some nice pretty moves. So that was cool. The most uncomfortable match of the night was Nathan Vanderbilt beat Rose Gold in a no holes barred match. That's an intergender match, and they kind of played off of a couple breaking up. So I told uh, my girl, I was like, I said, this is meant to make you uncomfortable. I think that was the goal. I think they kind of accomplished that with that. But Lamar Diggs interfered in that match, cost Rose Gold the match. Nathan Vanderbilt won. Main event, I called it the greatest wrestling match of the year for Georgia, and I'm standing by it. I constantly go back and look at the highlights, trying to figure out how can I submer- like merge this into a one-minute clip just to post everywhere. And, you know, I'm, I'm working on that. I downloaded the video editor app. But, yeah, that was the – whew, that match was crazy. Nodgicism versus Hunter James for the PCW Championship. Match of the year, the crowd was going nuts for it. And in the end – Dominique Stucky ruined the party. So Hunter James, he lost. I can tell that the crowd was ready for a Hunter James uh, title win. They've been ready for about a year now. I already know that. But Dominique Stucky came in. He well deserves it because his story with Naja goes back a year. You got tased by the man a year ago, and that's what started the whole Naja Sism Hill run. And now you get your revenge. You take the title from him after the match. I'm glad he didn't pull the whole super babyface thing. I'm going to wait. We're going to do a fair. He's like, nah, I'm just going to go ahead and get this done out the way now. So congratulations to Dominique Stuckey for becoming your new PCW champion. And I'm going back to PCW this weekend because they have a show tomorrow. And he gets his first test, which I can't wait for. He gets to go up against my boy Trey Shaw one-on-one. So that's everything that's going on so far. How, like, I, like I said, guys, Halloween Havoc, that's this weekend on Sunday. You can check it out on Peacock. Start time is 7 p.m. And, yeah, that's everything I got for you right now. That's the gentleman who won uh, the, the Royal Rumble or the, the Rumble, the match. The Battle Royale? The Battle Royale. Yeah, Dominique Stuckey. Like, okay. when you sit there and you say you're going to do a Battle Royale and the winner gets the title shot whenever they want, that's the key word, whenever they want, I'm saying, like, oh, okay, so we're going to see title changes tonight. So yeah. they did the right thing. The crowd was definitely ready. You could tell from a lot of reactions during the match. Like, I even got a video. I'm sitting here and watch uh, Hunter James pulled off a brain buster on the turnbuckle. He hit the hit, dropped him on the turnbuckle with a brain buster, then picked him back up and dropped him in the ring with a brain buster. And now I just still kicked out. I almost lost my voice. I'm mm. sitting here like, what? Like after that, I'm like, yeah, Naja ain't losing this belt. But it was wonderful, very mm. beautiful thing. I can't wait to go back tomorrow see Trey Shaw versus uh Dominique Stuckey. This is big for Dominique. There's a lot of good talent down there. I know he's been traveling around. He won Most Improved Wrestler earlier this year in 2024. You know, he said his feet has gone up. His feet's definitely gone up now. He got that Platinum Championship, though. Okay. But great, Sean. Can't wait to see him face Trey Shaw tomorrow. Yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it, man. Like I said, I was definitely, you know, keep it tuned on your clips. You know what I mean? It was definitely, like you said, the, the atmosphere looked good. Like, the the um, the um performance by the wrestlers looked like it was it was well. Like, it was professional wrestling. You know what I mean? Well, they are professional, but they're independent. You know what I mean? But, um. The thing that kills me is their trainer is younger than us. Mm. Like, their trainer and dietitian, he is younger than us. Trey Shaw, like, he is he's incredible, man. Like, they have a great group of talent, some great trainers. And even being away from a while and coming back, you're sitting here and you're seeing how everybody gets better. Like, yeah. They're constantly getting better in there. You might see them one week where they look fidgety, and then the next week they look great. I take Edward Draven as a perfect example here. That man right there, I remember when I first walked in, he was decent. Now the kid is good. He is very, very good. Hats off to their trainers. Hats off to Trey Shaw for, you know, being a trainer and a dietitian for them. The kid's not even 25 yet. I think he's only like 23. Like, incredible. Heads over heels, like, beyond as far as experience. Like, he carries himself like a veteran. So mm-hmm. hats off to those guys. Great show. Can't wait to go back tomorrow. That's all right. Shout out to PCW, man. Y'all keep it up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, moving on to WNBA Finals recap. So the New York Liberty have won their very first WNBA title. They defeated the Minnesota Lynx in Game 5 this past weekend. 
on uh, Sunday, October 20th. They defeated the uh, Lynx 67-62. to uh, Jaquel Jones is your WNBA Finals MVP, so congratulations to her. Um, I think she was the most consistent player um, on that roster this this uh, this playoff. So I'm super proud of her. Well deserved, and um, great job for the New York Liberty to be able to win that first WNBA championship. I thought my uh, my pick was going to be wrong early in the year. They was looking shaky um, at the beginning of the finals, but they they found a way to make it happen. Um, Sabrina Inescu wasn't the the big factor, but she did hit one three pointer in that game when she needed it. She went one for nineteen in that game, which was not. Uh, I, none, none I had ever seen into that game, but you know, she's a champion now. Um, she gets to go back and look at this film and, and see how she wants to be able to get better next year. So, um, that's a big thing for them. And I mean, I expect, I expect these two teams to see each other once again. So for sure. So it was a good WNBA season. Shout out to all the, the WNBA players. Um, what a, what a way to be able to, um, take in this season with all the, you know, new faces coming in the league and, and, and the league and, you know, uh, microscoped you know you're getting blown up by you know all these new faces and stuff like that so um what a way to be able to take in that that attention and, and make the best of it and y'all definitely didn't disappoint with this wnba finals um so i'm looking forward to see what the unrivaled league has going on um at the beginning of next year so y'all stay tuned for that information and again congratulations to the new york liberty for winning your first ever wnba championship moving on to thursday night football preview thursday night football for tonight kicking off uh, we got a good game down in L.A. We got the Rams hosting the Vikings. Um, the Vikings coming off their first loss last week. It was a close game. Um, but they got their first loss last week. Um, so I know they're looking to get back on track on the winning streak. And also the Rams. The Rams are uh, still down a few players. Um, I believe Cooper Cup is coming back this week. So that would be a pretty good fit for them. Um, and then, uh, you know, of course, Justin Jefferson and the old guys over there in, in Minnesota, what they got going on. So um, I think it's good. I think it would be a pretty – pretty decent game i think it'll probably be about 20 24 24 27 maybe the vikings way but uh the only way to find out tonight is to tune in on prime video make sure you pull back up on saturday at the sports order to get updated information from thursday night football let me say this right quick before you move on right, good. um falcons fans we don't want cooper cup go ahead and move on okay all right you're so silly <laughs> man yeah, no, but that's tired of that they, they no. keep talking about we should trade for Cooper Cup. Have y'all seen our front seven? Like, we need an edge rusher. We don't, need mm. no, we don't need no more wide receivers. We got wide receivers. Yeah. We need an edge rusher. Mm. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. No, you good. He's so silly. Week seven recap is as follows in the NFL. For Sunday games, we had the Eagles dominate the Giants 28-3. Uh, Saquon Barkley he had 176 yards in that game. Uh, he, he That was the second most yards by a player. Um, against a former team when they first played them. I forgot who the first player was. I tried to look it up this morning, but I forgot. Um, they but played so, in uh, – didn't they play in New York? No, no, yeah, they played in New York. But I'm saying I, I don't know where – it was because it, it, you know how they how they bring the stats at the bottom. Yeah. Was, you know, Saquon had 176. He almost had his career high, um, but he wanted to let the young boys, you know, get a chance to get reps. Um, but it was saying that at the bottom of – you know, it was like Saquon Barkley, the second most yards against a former teammate when they first play him, you know, against a former team, that type of stuff. So, yeah, had 176 yards, um, hats off to Saquon Barkley. We had the Jaguars defeat the Patriots 36, excuse me, 32 to 16 in London. Uh, we had the Bills defeat the Titans 34 to 10. Uh, we got some NFL news, too, also um, pertaining to the Titans and the Chiefs. I'll get into that. Uh, then we had the Packers defeat the Texans in a close one, 24 to 22. We had the Lions defeat the Vikings in a close one, 31 to 29. We had the Seahawks put a whooping on the Falcons, thirty-four to fourteen. Yeah. I really wasn't expecting a, a, a whooping like that, but um, you know that's what happened. Um, then we had the Bengals defeat the Browns, twenty-one to fourteen. Uh, Deshaun Watson got injured in that game, um, so it's looking like he'll be out for the season, um, unfortunately. But uh, they have named Jameis Winston as their new starter. A hey, shout out to Jameis Winston, also a real stand-up guy. You know he definitely uh, spoke highly and well about. Um, Deshaun Watson, and, he, and you really could hear the passion and the care for him. Um, so I just love the fact that, you know, they have that type of leader on the team who believes in these guys and who and who's not going to throw dirt on nobody's name, no matter when they up or down. So I really respect Jameis Winston about that. And I know he's going to be trying to rally these guys around to play for Deshaun Watson and play for each other to kind of get back on track and win some games. So uh, be on the lookout for the Browns to be better. Then we had the coach defeat the Dolphins 16-10. Um, it's supposed to be rumored that Tua is coming back. So um, Tua is supposed to be suiting back up here, I believe, in week eight. So we shall see. 
Um, we had the Commanders dominate the Panthers 40 to 7. We had the Rams defeat the uh, the Raiders 20 to 15. We had the Chiefs continue their undefeated streak against the 49ers. The Chiefs defeated the 49ers 28 to 18. We had the Steelers defeat the Jets. Uh, Russell Wilson made his debut against the Jets on uh, Sunday night. They they dominated the Jets 37 to 15. Uh, we had a pretty good game down in uh, Tampa Bay. We had the Ravens defeat the Buccaneers 41 to 31, and we had the Cardinals defeat the Chargers 17 to 15. So again, make sure y'all tune in to the Saturday Sports Order to get updated information from Thursday Night Football and to look ahead to NFL Week Eight. Uh, moving on to NBA, NBA uh, again, the Hawks season kicked off yesterday. Uh, we had the debut of the number one pick. Uh, so things I, I wrote down for him. Um, granted, he is 19, and uh, you could definitely see it on the, on the court. Um, what I would like for him is to be more violent um, in the paint. You know, he had a couple opportunities yesterday, you know, yesterday during the game on fast breaks and stuff like that at the rim, and he decided to lay it up. This is not a layup. This is not a layup league. I know he played in Euro, Europe and stuff like that, uh, where the talent is not as you know physical um, at the rim, but it's the NBA. You have to be more physical at the finish um, in the NBA here. So I think that's something he'll, he'll look to be able to be better at and grow into. Um, I think he was confident. I think he had a lot of confidence. He took a lot of shots, um, took a lot of three-pointers. He did make his first ever you know shot in the NBA. But after that, he went pretty cold. He went two for eight last night. Um, but again, um, defensively, I think some things he need to work on still. But again, granted, he's 19. You can definitely tell in his in his play style and his in his in his motions. He's young still. Um, but I think uh, free throws. You know, he got to be better at free throws. I don't think there's no excuse for whatever age you are um, as as an NBA player, especially the first round pick. You have to be better at free throws. He did not shoot free throws well last night. Uh, I believe he was uh, one for four, if I'm not mistaken. Let me put it up here. I watched most of the game, but I ended up falling asleep around the uh, end of the fourth quarter. Um, so he said showed it to you. Well, I, I had to find. You know, I had to get it online. You know, I, you know, oh, okay. how, however I watch, but I had to watch it. Um, yeah. So Zach, he two went. Uh, he went two for eight from the line, and he went two for four from the free throw, so fifty percent, which wasn't horrible. But again, he has to be better. When you have a center shooting better than you, um, shout out to. Uh, Congo also. Yeah. I mean, my boy Aneku, uh, Aneku, uh, Aneku, I don't know how to pronounce his first name. Aneku Okongu. Aneku, yeah. Yeah, Aneku, yeah. He uh, he played he played tremendous. He he um, surpassed his career high. His career high was 22. He dropped a new career high of 28 last night. He had 28 points, eight rebounds, and one assist, along with three blocks. Um, so he was definitely doing a lot for the team last night. So um, definitely be looking at him to begin way more minutes. Um, Dyson Daniels, he had a good game. Also, he played great defense. Uh, so, you know, a lot of the new guys we got, they, they came up and they and they, and then they showed out and did great things for the team. Um, so I'm looking forward to this team to continue to be uh, defensively mindset, had a defensive mindset, but also, um, you know, find a ways to be more productive on the offensive side of the ball. So, you know, of course, Trey Young did his thing. He had a 30-point game to kick off the season to go along with 11 rebounds. I mean, excuse me, 12 assists. He had 12 assists. That's funny. Uh-huh. Me and you was talking about that. I was like, what's another guy in this league that can sit here consistently giving you 25 and 12? Hey. He's going to give you 30 and 12. I told you, Trey Young is him, man. So um, he kind of, he kind of started off slow in the game also, but he was mm-hmm. getting people involved. But then, you know, he takes off, you know, slowly, gra- gradually, but he can give you buckets and assists any night. Uh, so, again, I'm, I'm excited for this Hawks team. Um, again, I think I, I think I like the rotation. Um, I enjoy seeing Zach out there flying around. Um, Jalen Johnson, you know, Jack, Zachary, you need to he need to look at Jalen Johnson's attack at the rim because he was trying to dunk on people all night. You know what I'm saying? This guy was trying to dunk from maybe 15 feet out of the rim. You know, just trying to dunk on guys. So like that, that type of aggression, uh, Zachary Richey is going to need to adapt to that because um, he, he has tremendous size and he has the size and he has mobility uh, to be able to get to the rim. So he just need to work on his finishing, free throw shooting, and uh, that's pretty much all I had uh, for for my. Um, notes on him, but uh, I was I was glad to see him. Um, the city took well to him. Um, after 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 consideration, I do think we took the right player. Um, again, just for you no, know, just for the ceiling he has. You know, um, I just think he has a great opportunity. Again, he's going to have a, he's going to be a, a good shooter in this league. Um, again, he has good size. When he gets more weight on him and get more confident on the defensive side of the ball, um, I think he'll be even better. So um, I think that should be big emphasis for him: free throws, defense. Uh, being more aggressive at the 
in the paint. And, uh, and when he start to, you know, develop that and do that more, I think he's going to be a, a great player in his league. So I'm excited for him. So shout out to Zach. He got his first win in, in, in the NBA. And uh, I look forward to seeing him get many more wins. Uh, Moving on to the rest of the NBA from yesterday. Matter of fact, let's go back to Tuesday. So Tuesday kicked off the NBA season. Officially kicked off yesterday, but Tuesday we had two games of some great powerhouses. Uh, we had defending uh, champions, Boston Celtics, dominate the Knicks, one thirty-two to one hundred nine. Um, they set a, they tied a uh, three-point record in that game. Um, that they, they matched the NBA record, twenty-nine three-pointers. They shot twenty-nine three-pointers in that game. They actually uh, the Celtics actually tied their franchise record for most uh, threes and a half. They, uh, they had 17 threes in the first half. They, if they would have had 18 threes in the first half, they would have uh, tied the NBA record. Um, but they did still tie NBA record for most threes in the game, which was 29, which that, that's phenomenal. But I don't think that's going to sustain. Um, but, you know, they had a great game one. So this is something that they're going to be looking to do uh, going forward to make sure that three ball. They got a lot of good shooters. So, I mean, it's not I'm not saying it's, sustain, it's not sustainable, but it's going to be hard to do, um, especially with the way teams are probably going to play them going forward. Um, knowing the way they're they're looking to shoot the three ball, uh, but again they dominated uh, the, the the Knicks one thirty two to one hundred nine, and then we had LeBron James and Bronny James make history uh, again being the first ever father son NBA duo to take the court and it's at the same time in a game uh, again they they did that game one of the NBA season and the Lakers got the W um, on top of that which is which is you know ultimately the biggest thing they wanted. The Lakers defeated the Minnesota Timberwolves 110 to 103. Um and again I think who 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 you think an early MVP vote? Who you think who you think going to get MVP this year? Uh, dang. I'm going to say Tatum cuz Tatum out he out to prove something this year. He kind of I feel like he feels some type of way about winning the championship and then not really getting much playing time in the Olympics. He kind of thought that I feel like Tatum thought that you know, after winning the championship, oh, that's going to stop all the doubters. People can call me champion, all this other stuff. And it's like, I think he learned from the Olympics, like, yeah, I still have doubters. I still have people that don't believe. And I'm like, that's okay. That's just more motivation. That's more motivation added to you. So you should take that motivation and go win an MVP. Hey. I think either Anthony Edwards or Shea Gildred Alexander going to win MVP this year. Shea too take. easy. He's too easy. He was so close. Who? <laughs> Shea. Oh, like, wait. He was so close last year. Like, that boy's a, that boy's a monster. Or maybe or maybe even Giannis. I think Giannis is going to surprise a lot of people this year, too. Yeah. Hey, did you hear the uh, NBA is investigating uh, Joel Embiid not playing? That's so dumb. You know, I mean, well, oh, who knows? But I'm just saying, who, who are you to say that I don't think I will ever play back-to-backs again? Like, what? I'm like, sorry. He said what? Yeah, that's what he said. He said that. He said, I don't think I'll ever play back-to-backs again. Like, okay, what? so what happens to the playoffs? We got to play a seven-game series. Hey, I ain't in it, man. I guess it's man. what he going, I guess it's what he was saying, that when we get to the play, I got to make it to the playoffs or whatever. But, you man, know y'all, what? I'm, just, I'm just going to write off the 76ers until further notice. Well. Yeah, I'm just going to write them off. We, we doing this. We doing low management. He done took it from Kawhi. I'm going to write you off a little Lord bit. Lord have mercy. Uh, then the Pacers defeated the Pistons 115-109. The Magic defeated the Heat 116 to 97. The Bucks defeated the 76ers 124 to 109. The Cavaliers defeated the Raptors 136 to 106. The Hornets defeated the Rockets 110 to 105. The Pelicans defeated the Bulls 123 to 111. Uh, shout out to Lonzo Ball. He was on the court. Um, it's from my understanding, DeJounte Murray got injured. He fractured Dejounte, his hand. Yeah, he, see? Man, you know what? But hopefully he get a speed recovery. He um, gets healthy so he can get back on the court um, and help that New, help that New Orleans team uh, continue to be good. Then also uh, we had we had the Grizzlies defeat the Jazz one twenty six to one hundred four. We had the Suns defeat the Clippers in overtime one sixteen to one thirteen. And we had the game. Warriors dominate the Trailblazers one thirty nine to one hundred four. So moving on to tomorrow uh, today's games in the NBA. Kicking off at 7 o'clock, we got the Wizards hosting the Celtics. The Mavericks hosting the Spurs. That game should be good tonight at 7.30 p.m. on TNT. Uh, then we have uh, the Thunder um, going up against the Nuggets tonight at 10 p.m. on TNT. And we have the Kings hosting the Timberwolves later on tonight at 10 p.m. also. For Friday games, October 25th, we have the Magic hosting the Nets. The Raptors hosting the 76ers. The Cavaliers hosting the Pistons. 
the Knicks hosting the Pacers at 7.30 p.m. on ESPN. We have the Hawks hosting the Hornets. The Pacers, uh, excuse me, the Rockets hosting the Grizzlies. The Bulls going up against the Bucks. The Jazz hosting the Warriors. We have the Lakers Suns game on Friday night at 10 p.m. on ESPN. And we have the Trailblazers hosting the Pelicans. So make sure y'all tune in to Saturday Sports Total to get updated information from the NBA. I'm so excited the NBA is back, man. You know, just really, you know, I'm, I'm just looking forward to see, uh, watch the Hawks more this year. You know, I'm looking to see uh, the growth of, of Zachary, um, the growth of the team. I'm looking to see how the rotations continue to go, um, you know, uh, with the with the Hawks and see how we want to be able to implement, you know, players in to, to you know, get defense, get offense, kind of find that balance um, to keep rotation of, of defenders and offensive players on the court. So I'm excited for Quinn Snyder. He got a lot of good pieces around him. Um, you know, DeAndre Hunter started hot last night. He got in the foul trouble early. But, again, we have pieces to be able to plug in. I'm ready to see Kobe Bufkin uh, be available. He wasn't available. He hurt his shoulder. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to see how he develops for his second year and, um, you know, get on the court to see what type of impact he ha- he can have. So I'm excited for that. So be on the lookout again uh, for more NBA news uh, coming down the line. And uh, make sure you tune into the Saturday Sports Hub to get updated information. Um, also, before we move on, I wanted to uh, go back to the NFL news for um, the, the Chiefs and the Titans. So the Chiefs are looking to acquire um, DeAndre Hopkins. They are finalizing that deal. Um, to get, you know, one of the best wide receivers in this league still, in my opinion, um, and DeAndre Hopkins uh, down to uh, down to Kansas City. So the Titans will receive a 2025 fifth-round pick that becomes a fourth-rounder if the Chiefs reach the Super Bowl and Hopkins plays <laughs> 50% of the snaps with Kansas City. Um, Tennessee will also pick up $2.5 million of Hopkins' remaining $8 million salary, um, and the trade is expected to be completed. Um, it was expected to be completed yesterday, so I'm pretty sure the trade has went through. Um, so again, a well needed group um, for the for uh, the Chiefs, you know, in the wide receiver position, and again, giving them a, a reliable, trustworthy number one guy who could still be, you know, a top ten wide receiver in this league. If you ask me, especially with somebody like Patrick Mahomes throwing in the ball, you know what I mean. So uh, be on the lookout for how that for how that um, you know rolls out and how that develops. So I'm excited to see those guys suit up. And um, I, again, I know he can do a lot for. Um, that Chiefs team in it with the uh, with the wide receiver core. So uh, more news in the NFL. Oh yeah, I heard the Chiefs might not be done either. Uh, we have so uh, Bryce, not, not Bryce Young. That's his name, right? The Bryce Young. Yeah, Bryce Young is looking to start again. Yeah, Bryce Young is starting again for the Panthers. Oh, um, the Seahawks made a trade also. The, the Seahawks trade Jerome Baker uh, for picks for the Titans. Ernest Jones the fourth, so the Seahawks acquire Ernest Jones the fourth from the Titans in exchange for Jerome Baker and a draft pick and a swap of inside linebackers. So both of them traded their inside linebackers. Um, the Titans will also receive a 2025 fourth round pick in the trade. Um, so that happened this week. Um, also, some more information. Uh, what we got here? Let's see what we got. Oh yeah, uh, the Texas the Texans signed Devin White. The, uh, the Texas signed Devin White after we released him, which again I still don't know why we released him. You know, I I, I, I tweeted this out. Um, you know, when, when I learned that we released him, that you know he he got on he got on that podcast, the Pivot Podcast, I believe it is, with uh, Ryan Clark and all those guys. I believe that's the name of that podcast. Um, and you know he was just speaking about how how we gave him opportunity. He was just feeling it. He was loving to be a part of this team. And and then you know five weeks into the season, you you're not a, you're not a, a eagle anymore. You know, I don't know if because you, you felt like you didn't win a starting spot, you wasn't supposed to, you know, you didn't want to play no more, whatever it was. But come on, man, you know, we paid you money. We paid you to come be a part of training camp, be on this roster, and you didn't even suit up. But you were talking so highly of being an eagle and how Howie Rosen believed in you. But now you're a Texan. And, again, I don't know people's life, and I'm not judging the man. I just want to know what happened so I can kind of get closure of why, you know, my linebacker room was, was you know, cut short. You know, I mean, I'm losing players left and right, but I'm happy for the guy. Hope he does well in, in Houston uh, with the Texans, a much needed uh, position group that needs to be filled down there. And again, just best of luck, man. Hope you do great. Hope you see the field. And um, I know you can still play at the linebacker position at a high level. And hopefully, he does that for the Texans. So, uh, moving on to NCAA Week Eight, NCAA Top Twenty Five Week Eight was definitely uh, not disappointing. We had a lot of great games um, on Saturday. Of course, we had the best team in the country, 
the Georgia Bulldogs go down to Austin, Texas. You know, mm-hmm. let me let me get this out here. You know, this go ahead and talk about them. They this deserve is, all the praise. This is this is this is the worst I've ever seen of officiating in the SEC ever in my life. First of all, let's go back to let's go back to the the PI call. So before the path interference call, they you know they uh, they caught the pass interference on the, on the on the defender guy. The the referees marked the ball off, so the, the the offense was already on the field, right? So our offense, they had moved the ball, set the ball. The offense was about to run a play, so the play call was called. I mean, the, the penalty was called. Yep. The ball was set, so that means the play's gone, right? You can't. So you, I never seen this before. So this this is the this is the scenario. I'm just going through it because it really hit me the other day of of how all this panned out. It was it was just, it was it was horrible. Go so ahead. I saw a lot. So yeah, me too. So yeah, boom, we set the ball out. Offense about to run the ball. Georgia offense about to run the ball to where they marked off the penalty to. Texas fans, oh, they cry babies. Throwing water bottles, being childish, you know. They, cause they knew they were going to lose anyway because they suck. You know, so they were just trying to do everything. <laughs> oh, that's a horrible call, man. Oh, that's a horrible call. So, boom, that so they, they that take place. That was about a two-minute, two-and-a-half-minute time, you know. So, during that time, now, now, mind you, again, the ball has been marked off. So, the play has the, the play has been called dead. The, the the penalty has been initiated already. The ball was set. So now we get this intermission. They got to clean out the field. We come back from the intermission. They say the call is reversed. So mm-hmm. I, I like I said, I just never seen that how the ball has been placed. So the ball has been placed. At the, so the, the penalty has been marked off. It was Georgia ball. Georgia was on the ball about to snap the ball. Now your fans, the fans, stop the play. So first of all, we didn't get a we didn't get a sideline warning for the Texas for their fans. We didn't get no call for that. First of all, and then when mm-hmm. you come back, you reverse the PI call. You reverse the PI call to feel like you put them back in the game because the only way, only only reason Texas defense uh, offense scored, Kirby Smart kicked that onside field goal at the beginning of the half, which was weird, which I don't know why. So he gave them a fair position. They went up eight. They had eight points. Then you get the PI call reversed, and they they put you at the nine yard line. To, and you score again. Other than that, they, they didn't score. Other than that, they barely even got on that side of the field to run plays. You know what I mean? So they, like I said, it it, it was so evident that the referees were in some they they were in somebody's pockets. You know what I mean? I understand you in Texas, but it, you can't make it that you can't make it that noticeable. You know what I mean? But, but but I, I'm I'm so glad that you know even you know through all the trying to rob us of, of cars and everything, we still showed up and showed out on that field. You know what I mean? That, you, like I told people, that gridiron, you can't lie between that gridiron. Understand? When you get on that field and you line up and them boys smacking you in your mouth and, and Quinn Ewers and Archie Man over there looking confused. Like, what is going Boy, on? They saying ghost. Hey, man. Like they I told my nephew, ghost man, out there. Like I told my nephew, man, I need to see them savage pads. You know what I'm saying? And guess what was rolling out them savage pads, baby? Don't don't sleep on this defense. Excuse me. Don't sleep on this defense, man. All right? When them boys, hey, man, Kirby Smart said the only thing he wanted them boys to eat and them boys went out there and ate. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm just excited for these guys, man. We went into Texas. Uh, we went down to Austin. You know, everybody against us. Nobody picked us to win. The only one was rocking with them or the Bulldog Nation. And that's all they needed, man. They needed them, them guys to the left and right of them on that field and, and, and the support we had behind them to go out there and execute. And that's what they did. So, of course, again, we, we went down there and dominated Texas 30 to 15. I'm standing on it. We dominated them guys. The score might not say dominated, but on oh, that no. field, on the field, we dominated them guys. So I'm super, super proud of those uh the team. I'm uh, super proud of, of the work we have over these next couple of weeks to get better. Um and it's the first time again I've seen them having two bye weeks in a in a season. I'm not complaining. We need it, man. You know, those guys are physical. Um and you know, I'm I'm excited for how they're preparing for this Georgia Florida game to continue to get to get better and better. So um, again, you know, the number five team in Atlanta, Georgia Bulldogs, defeated the number one team, Texas, uh, 30 to 15, go dogs. Uh-huh. Uh, then we had number six, Miami, with a thriller down in Louisville. They defeated my uh, Louisville 54 to, 52 to 45, excuse me. Number 10, Clemson defeated Virginia, 48 to 31. Number 16, Indiana dominated Nebraska, 56 to 7. I'm kind of glad uh, Riola, uh, Dylan Riola went over there. You know what I mean? I'm glad that we, <laughs> next year we're going to see uh, – Next year we're gonna see Rashad. I believe that's his name. The the, the young black kid, the young black quarterback we got um, yeah. off, from um, out west earlier this year. So you know he'll be our starting quarterback next year. It looks like. Uh, but even though we got some good competition too, I don't think they just gonna give it. They are gonna hand it to him. Um, 
And then we had number 19, Missouri, defeat Auburn 21-17. Number 23, Army, who uh, they defeated East Carolina 45-28. to We had number 7, Alabama, get upset by number 11, Tennessee, 24-17. I'm, I'm so excited for this game now. You know, I, I always enjoy saying going to see Tennessee, but for Tennessee to have that confidence, oh, we beat Alabama. Alabama beat Georgia, you know, so like, mm-hmm. they, you know, people think they can beat us, you know what I'm saying? Because we – we beat ourselves, though. You know what I mean? We really did beat ourselves in that first game against Alabama. But that's past. That's in the past. We've been playing much oh, better wow. football, much better you defense know, going forward. You know why that's in the past, though, for real? What? Because there's a team sitting here brewing in the SEC, having lost since the first game. It's okay. Yeah. We're going to kick Alabama out the playoffs. Oh, Don't worry. Tigers, okay. Don't worry. We smell blood. Not playoffs. They're not, but they're not even no, going to make No, we're going to make sure that don't happen because you know playoff, how the illusion committee works. There's no you know way. how the committee can be. No, there's no way they're making the playoffs, bro. There's no Ooh, way, Two losses? Bro. Two losses, no. You, you know how the committee can be. No, man. No way, bro. <laughs> no, I no agree way. with you. Trust no me, way. I agree with you. Some, we talked about this, though. We said somebody's going to get in with two. But it's but okay. Cal- it's not, it's not going to be Bama. But the caliber of losses, though, you 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 lost to an unranked team when you were the number one seed, first of all. That's true. Then you just lost to another seed that was underneath you. No way, bro. No yeah, way. Y'all still got Knicks. And yes, what? Saban can still go talk to the committee. You never know. But it's okay. We going to nip it in the bud. They going to play my Tigers, and we going to go ahead and nip this in the bud. They ain't seen the playoffs. They can figure out a pl- They can figure out what bowl game they like this year. Mm-hmm. They ain't seen it. We going to do it second year in a row. We going to nip it in the bud. They ain't getting in this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then we got number 12, Notre Dame. They dominated Georgia Tech 31-13. to We had number 22, Illinois, with the upset over number 24, Michigan, 21-7. to We had number 25, Navy, dominate Charlotte 51-17. Number 14, Texas A&M defeated Mississippi State 34-24. Number 8, LSU dominated Arkansas 34-10. Number 9, Iowa State defeated UCF 38-35. That was a good game, actually. That UCF-Iowa State, they were going back and forth. UCF was actually up early a lot in that game, and they ended up losing. Uh, Then we had number 17, Kansas State defeat West Virginia 45-18. And number 21, SMU dominate Stanford 40-10. For Thursday night games in the top 25 tonight on uh, ESPN at 7.30, we have number 19 Pitt hosting Syracuse. So that should be a pretty good game. Uh, pretty big matchup for Fran Brown and his team um, looking to get back on the winning streak. They've only lost one game this year. Um, so, you know, what a, what a better way to be able to try to go win against a ranked opponent. Um, and Pitt, Pitt is 6-0 for the first time in a long time. Uh, you know, they lead, the, they lead the ACC right now. Um, again, they are the, they own the only – team left in the ACC that is uh, undefeated in the top 25. So that should be a pretty good game. And then for Friday night games, we have the Heisman front uh, runner, number 17, Boise State, um, going up against UNLV. Uh, what's his name? Hold on. The running back. Uh, Ashton Genty. Ashton Genty right now is the front runner uh, to win the Heisman. So we shall see how that continues to ro- uh, roll out as the, as the, se- as the season uh, continues. Excuse me. Uh, so make sure y'all tune into Saturday Sports Huddle to get the full uh, slate for Saturday and get updated information from Thursday and Friday night um, NCAA football. Uh, then hey, moving cousin. it up, say again, cuz. Oh no, I was gonna say it's uh, Miami and Pitt in the ACC. They're the only two undefeated teams. Okay, are. okay, yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot about Miami. Yeah, Miami. Yeah, Miami. They doing get good too close too. to losing. That's all. They, 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 yeah, they, I, flirt I, with, I, they flirt with it. Yeah, fact. They be up and down, boy. Uh, but moving on again, ladies and gentlemen, the World Series is set. The World Series is set, ladies and gentlemen. It will kick off tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Uh, so for this weekend, so the Guardians uh, fell to the Yankees five to two um, to force. Oh, excuse me. So they, they went they went the extra innings, but the, uh, the Yankees end up um, having a big um, tenth inning. And again, they 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 won that series four games to one. And again, they will be hosting the uh, the Dodgers in the World Series on Friday. And then the Dodgers defeated the Mets. Um, to win that game, to win that series, four games to two, the Dodgers defeated the Mets ten to five. And again tomorrow night at eight p.m. on Fox, Game One of the World Series will kick off. Um, it will be in L.A. for Games One and Two, and then Games Three and Four will shift to New York uh, for the Yankees to host the Dodgers. Um, but I'm looking to see. Uh, it's going to be I ho- hopefully this hopefully this World Series go to Game Seven. Uh, two powerful offenses. Um, you got Aaron Judge with the Yankees. You got Shoei Otani with the Dodgers. 
Um, so it's going to be a great matchup. A lot of big names. You know, you got Betts, Mookie Betts with the Dodgers, those type of players. So it's going to be a great matchup, man, um, for the Yankees and Dodgers. I don't know if they ever met in the uh, World Series before, but I know they're meeting this week. It's going to be a good matchup. Some time so. in the, uh, I've, I've heard them on radio, not the radio, um, TV. I think they met some time in the 80s. It's okay. Like first time in like 40 years or so. Okay, yeah. So this is going to be a good, this is going to be a good World Series, man. The Dodgers, Yankees. Two great uh, programs, you know, two great organizations in the Major League Baseball. So very historic, um, known for winning. Um, so I know it's going to be a good matchup. So, again, game one is kicking off tomorrow at 8 p.m. on Fox. Uh, and then we're going to wrap up with some National Hockey uh, National Hockey League information. From Monday games, October 21st, we had the Maple Leafs defeat the Lightning 5-2. to two. From Tuesday games, we had the Capitals defeat the Flyers 4-1. to one. The Wild over the Panthers 5-1. to one. The Lightning defeat the Devils eight to five. The Sabres over the Stars four to two. The Rangers defeated the Canadians seven to two. The Blue Jackets over the Maple Leafs six to two. The Red Wings defeated the Islanders one to zero. The Jets defeated the Blues three to two. The Canucks over the Blackhawks six to three. The Avalanche defeated the Kraken three to two. The Predators over the Bruins four to zero. The Hurricanes defeated the Oilers three to two. The Senators defeated the Utah Hockey Club four to zero. The Flames over the Penguins 4-3. The Ducks defeated the Sharks 3-1. And the Golden Knight defeated the Kings 6-1. Last night games, October 23rd, we had the Capitals defeat the Flyers 6-3. For today's games, kicking off at 7 o'clock, we got the Bruins hosting the Stars. The Maple Leafs hosting the Blues. The Red Wings hosting the Devils. The Lightning going up against the Wild. The Panthers going up against the Rangers. The Flames host the Hurricanes. The Utah Hockey Club hosts the Avalanche. The Jets going up against the Kraken. The Sharks going up against the Kings. For Friday games, October 25th, we have the Golden Knights hosting the Senators. The Devils hosting the Islanders. The Predators going up against the Blackhawks. And the Oilers are hosting the Penguins. So make sure y'all tune in to Saturday Sports Hotel, ladies and gentlemen, to get, to get updated information from the NBA, uh, Thursday Night Football, NCAA uh, Top 25. And also um, stay tuned for the World Series Game one, and I will have preview. I mean, I will have recap on Saturday for the winner of that game. Um, that's going to conclude our sports order for today. We appreciate everybody tuning in and staying to the end. We love y'all. Y'all have a blessed today. Y'all stay safe. As always, give God glory for life today. Make the best of it, man. Truly make the best of life today. You know, always try to be better. You know, none of us are perfect. We want to make mistakes, but wake up every day with the mindset that the things I did bad yesterday, I'm not going to do those things today. And the things that I need to be better at today, I'm going to work on getting at those. So love y'all. Y'all take care of yourselves. Cousin, it's always a pleasure, man. Make sure y'all go check out my cousin, man, Matt, host of Just Unconventional Podcast. Great content, great material. Make sure y'all go check him out. Turn him up. Like, I comment, got some subscribe. This week. Uh, he got some episodes dropping this week, so make sure y'all be on the lookout. And on that note, man, again, y'all be blessed. Appreciate y'all. Take care. Until next time. Peace. Peace, peace.